In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to run an ANOVA when the assumption of equality of variances is violated and you have more than one independent variable. I have another video where I show you how to run an ANOVA when the assumption is violated and you only have one independent variable, a one-way analysis of variance. In today's video, I'm talking about uh, a, a different situation where you have more than one independent variable. So you are doing a two-way analysis variance, a three-way analysis of variance, and, and so forth. I'm using the data set D5, and we have satisfaction, which is a continuous variable, satisfaction with the product. And I have two independent variables, size and color. So color has two values and size has three values. Let's check the assumption first. Analyze general linear model, univariate. Satisfaction goes here, size and color go to this box. Options, homogeneity tests, continue. Here you can see that uh, the significance level for Levin's test of equality of error variances is smaller than 0 0.05, so it's significant, meaning that the assumption is violated. You would think that you can go to analyze non-parametric tests and k-independent samples. However, you see that here you can only have one independent variable. But in your model, you have two independent variables. What should you do? Uh, the only option seems to be that um, you only include one independent variable in your analysis. So you, you investigate your independent variables separately. The range is uh, from one to three, three levels, and you can get the cross called wallis edge test. I demonstrated uh, this uh, one-way analysis of variance when the assumption doesn't hold. So please watch my previous video on this. What about uh, color? Color has only two values. You you can use it here as a grouping variable and get the cross cut wallace uh, edge test, but uh, there are better options. Uh, the easiest option is actually for color is to do a t-test. So independent samples t-test, where you send your, your outcome to, to the test variable box and color goes here. The, the, the values are one and two and click okay. Test is not significant actually, so. The assumption holds for color, and you can just look at the, the first row, this t-test, which uh, assumes equality of variances, and it's not significant. So color is not a significant predictor of satisfaction. Uh, as you remember, we have an, we had another option uh, I introduced in the previous video for one-way analysis of variance, and that is to go to compare means and one-way ANOVA. Satisfaction goes here, again, uh, size, because we cannot include both of them. So you have to look at them separately. So size uh, goes here and uh, you can get games howl. So this is a post hoc test when the equality of variance is not assumed. You can get uh, games howl. Uh, I demonstrated is this in the previous video. And uh, again, uh, so here you get uh, multiple comparisons using games Howell test for the levels of your uh, independent variable. Color, again, uh, you can look at the results t-test. Now let's do it in JASP. In JASP, click on ANOVA, ANOVA, satisfaction goes here, size and color, should go to this box. Uh, you can check the assumption, it's significant, meaning that uh, 
the, the assumption is violated. Can you request Brown, Forsyth, and Welsh corrections? No, because you have to, uh, more than one independent variable. Uh, the, the only option seems to, uh, to exclude color from your model. So you just look at size separately from color. Then you can get the correction. For non-parametric tests, again, you can send both of them to this box and you get for size and color. Again, color, it seems that t-test is a better option for color and because we know that uh, if we only look at color, it has two values and the assumption of equality of variances holds for color. So we just can do a p-test for color. Uh, but size, uh, again, you see that is a significant predictor. You can get post hoc tests for size. And we are interested in games Howell, not too key. This table gives you uh, the, the results of post hoc comparisons. So when you have more than one independent variable and the assumption is violated, it seems that uh, in JASP and SPSS, your only option is to look at your predictors separately. 